There's a growing divide among Republicans on Capitol Hill over defending former President Trump in that classified documents case. There's also a divide in whether Trump should be the GOP. Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama now joins us. Senator, thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. Senator, you recently went to Bedminster, New Jersey, to be with former President Trump on the day of his arraignment. You also skipped some Senate votes that day. Have you received any blowback from Republican colleagues in the upper chamber about your decision? No. You know, this was been planned about a month out. This was going to be a fundraiser, but it turned out to be a day of indictment also. So uh, uh, we couldn't win the vote uh, whether I was there or not. So, uh, you know, it worked out pretty good and uh, got to visit the president, have dinner with him and, uh, and uh, had a lot of fun. Did Leader McConnell ever tell you to stay? Nope. No, he did. Do you believe the Justice Department is operating independently here? Well, I hope we're not making a political Justice Department out of this. Uh, that's very concerning. But, Bob, let me tell you, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm an American. And uh, looking kind of from the outside in. And, uh, you know, when, when you go after uh, a former president and break a 240-year uh, string of not indicting anybody, uh, I hope to heck they have got a very serious case, one that is very provable and it's rock solid. Because let me tell you, it is going to cost the American taxpayers millions and millions of dollars more. And it's kind of embarrassing uh, to look at this situation when, you know, I've seen uh, presidents in my lifetime do a lot worse. Uh, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about President Trump. And I've looked at the indictment, the 50 pages, and, you know, I, I hope they've got something up their sleeve because this doesn't look very very well for the Justice Department or our country because we're going to go through a tough time here for the next few months. Former President Trump, your political ally, he has been fiercely criticizing the special counsel Jack Smith, calling him deranged and other names. Do you echo his remarks in any way or would you urge him to use different kind of language uh, when it comes to the special counsel? Well, the next time I give the president any advice will be the first time. Uh, he got elected. Uh, by speaking his piece, by telling the American people who he was, what he was going to do, how he was going to do it. Uh, I don't know the special counsel, uh, so I can't comment on that. He probably knows him a lot better than anybody or has done his research. But again, I hope this special counsel is going with his guns loaded and really understands that the American people are looking at them and looking at this Justice Department going, you better have something very strong and very provable because if it's not, uh, it's going to cause a big uproar in this country. Senator, I was scanning the crowd. I wasn't there, but looking at the photos of what happened in Bedminster, I didn't see many of your Senate Republican colleagues there, in part because they take a different view on former President Trump. Let's listen to what Senator John Thune, your colleague, had to say this week. The elections generally are about, you know, winning people, independent voters and moderate Republicans. We've lost three elections in a row now. Uh, he's been the issue in every one of those elections. And, um, and I don't think, you know, getting into this tit for tat where it's a race to the bottom to see who can uh, you know, retaliate against whom um, from one administration to the next is, uh, is the way to lead the country forward. What's your response to Senator Thune? Well, the big thing, being a former football coach, somebody's got to take the blame, right? And there's some people going to give the blame. We should be taking the blame here in Washington, D.C. for what happened in the last race in terms of the Senate and the House where we should have won by many more. Uh, that didn't have anything to do with President Trump. Uh, he's got his base of voters. Uh, people are going to go out and support him. He's going to need to build on that, and he will. But we, we need to stay out of that up here. We need to handle our own business here in D.C. The Republicans need to stand together. We're so divided right now. But, you know, I'm glad that we have, what, 10, 12, 14 people running on the Republican side. We need a deep bench. We need people that are going to be future candidates or possibly president of the United States. And so we all need to be on board on that together. But to blame President Trump for what happened uh, last November, that's absurd. But it's a coming from the number two Republican in the Senate. So is there a deep divide in your own party in the Senate over Trump? Well, you got some people that, that dislike some of the things that President Trump did. When, when they were in the Senate last time, I wasn't here when President Trump was in, uh, was, was in the White House. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, you're going to have people that are going to express their opinion between now and the end of the primary. But we had better come together. This country needs a leader in the White House. 
uh, we, we have not seen leadership in the last two and a half years. We saw it four years uh, when President Trump was, was in office. Now, a lot of people didn't like some of the abrasiveness that he ran with and become uh, when he was leader, but we need a strong leader. When you talk about taking the bull by the horns or having a strong leader, I'm curious about where, where, what that means when it comes to things happening inside the country. As you just said, the former president recently said if he wins again, he wants to appoint a special prosecutor to investigate his political opponent, President Joe Biden, in his family. Is that something you would agree with? Well, uh, I would say there's a lot of problems there. Uh, I am a senator. I have the opportunity to go behind the scenes and look at documents. Uh, I hate to see what this country is getting ready to go through uh, with the present president. Uh, we don't know where that's going to go. There are problems, and there is a lot of problems. So, that being said, uh, President Trump has just given the people of America his opinion of what he would do uh, when he's elected. And so we'll just have to wait and see with that. But again, we do need leadership. You know, I've got holes on all the, the uh, military officers that generals and admirals uh, have for four months. Uh, they say it's an important deal that, that I'm holding up readiness. I've heard zero from the White House. Now, if I was President of the United States and I had a senator over here that was holding up my generals and admirals, I'd make a phone call or I'd send for him. Go get him and let's talk this out. I've heard nothing. I've heard zero from the White House. And you're holding up some of these military nominations because you believe the Defense Department has the wrong position on how it funds and talks about in policy reproductive rights. Is that correct? Yeah, but it's more, it's about that. But it's more about changing the policy on your own. Bob, we cannot legislate this country from the White House or from the Pentagon. We can't allow them to do that. And this is more about them saying, listen, we're going to change this. We know we're supposed to go through Congress, but we're not going to do it. We're going to change it on our own. I said, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. I ran for Congress. I ran for Senate. I was elected. And our job here is to pass bills or not pass bills. So if they want to do that, leave the policy the way it is, send us a bill over, and let's vote on what they want. If it passes, we use it. If we don't, we stay with the old policy. That's been that way for decades. And all of a sudden, after Roe Wade, they said, well, let's put as many government employees, uh, uh, have them an opportunity to, to have an abortion. And that's exactly what happened. And so uh, I'm not allowing them to do it. And so I'm sticking with my my holes and uh, I'm going to get some conversation with uh, I've had 10 minutes with the uh, Secretary of Defense in four months. Uh, I've had zero with uh, Joe Biden. I've had zero really with uh, Chuck Schumer, Jack Reed, the, the, Air, uh, the Armed Services Committee uh, chairman. Uh, they're really concerned about it. Uh, there's zero uh, conversation going on. Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bob.